We are joined now by Dr. Mary Norton, who's giving a talk about genetics, the perils and pitfalls of expanded carrier screening. Dr. Norton, it's great to have you. Well, thank you for inviting me. So this type of screening is relatively new. So give us a little background and talk to us about the pros and cons that you've been seeing. So as you may know, for many years we've done carrier screening to look for a limited number of inherited disorders in families. And even though these conditions are inherited, most of the time they show up without people having any idea that they are in the family. Um, so conditions like cystic fibrosis we've tested for for a long time. But with the advances in genetics, we can now test for hundreds of different conditions all at the same time, less expensively. So it's a much more efficient way to test for lots of things all together. The challenge, you know, you asked about the pros and cons, right. that's the pro. So the cons are that as soon as you start testing for all those things, you're gonna find things. And we know that we all carry a few genetic diseases. And so if you test for everything, we're all gonna have something. And these are inherited such that they have to be in both partners. Right. So you find something in your pregnant patient and you then need to test her partner who may not be available, may not want to have testing, may not have insurance to cover the cost of his testing. And some of these diseases are rare, esoteric, no one knows much about them, so you have to try to explain to patients, we're not really sure what this means, and it opens a whole Pandora's box. So it's a mix, it's definitely a mixed bag. Yeah, I was thinking that it's gotta be hard for physicians if they've now, like you said, opened Pandora's box, and now right. you have a worried mother about right. something she might not need to be worried about. That is exactly right. And something that, you know, I'm a geneticist full time, and I've not heard of most of these conditions. So it requires then a lot of research to figure out what they are and to explain that to your patient. So although the cost of actually running the test is less, the cost in human anxiety in time and effort right. on the part of the provider is higher. So what should a physician do? How do they decide which of these tests, if any, they want to use in their practice? So ACOG has a new-ish practice bulletin from 2017 that describes three different options. Mm -hmm. One is to do the old-fashioned, based on your ancestry, offer a limited number of tests. That is still a reasonable approach that some practices use. One can also take that same limited panel of a few conditions, cystic fibrosis and a couple of other things, and offer that to everybody regardless of their ancestry which has some advantages because asking people where your ancestors from and gearing your care to that background has some stigmatizing potential and makes people uncomfortable. People may not know. Um, so so-called pan-ethnic screening, you have a limited panel, you offer everybody the same thing. And then expanded carrier screening is sort of doing these big panels with hundreds of disorders. Um, there are many different panels. They all have different conditions on them. So I think it is worth thinking about, you know, looking at them and really thinking about what you want to be offering. And the most important thing I think is offering every patient the same thing so you're not doing something different to right. different people in your practice. What kind of recommendations uh, does the group have for physicians when they're dealing with a positive test? They get something back and they have to now turn to their patient and help create a strategy to work with them. So when one finds something in the pregnant or preconception woman, mm -hmm. then the next step is to test the partner. Okay. And depending on the circumstances, actually sometimes we test the partner at the same time. If someone's pregnant, getting a further along in their pregnancy, it may be more efficient to just do, them, do both mm -hmm. people at once. Has the advantage also of less anxiety because if you find something in her, he probably doesn't have it and you avoid those two weeks of waiting for his results. But in any case, the first test is to test him. If he does carry the same condition, then that really warrants a visit with a genetic counselor. I think these okay. conditions are rare and complicated, and I think next steps probably warrant going to a genetic counselor. So if there's one point you'd like uh, members to take home with them after your talk, what would that be? Um, I think it is to understand the pros and cons of these panels, to really think about it and do the same thing across your practice and have a good strategy for follow-up. Very good. Dr. Norton, thank you so much for joining us. You are so welcome.
ACOG TV has all the coverage you want with the big events and keen newsmakers. Be sure to check out our content, which is updated each day here on YouTube from the ACOG 2019 meeting here in Nashville.